I'm a lucky person to have been raised in a family where boys and girls were treated equally, which was not normal, not the regular thing, when I grew up. I had very, you know, clear-minded, deliberate parents who believed in uh, social justice, who believed in equality between the sexes. And so I grew up taking this for granted that this is what I would be standing for. Both my parents were in public service. I took it for granted. The, the, the question for me was, what profession do I choose? I mean, I, I knew I was going to have education, go to the university like my parents had done. What would I choose? Economics, law, health. So I, I, in the end, I, I chose medicine. Here I am, 35 years old, and I was asked to come to the prime minister's office one day. And he asked me to enter the cabinet, the government. I was shocked. I had no such plan. He had seen me write articles in the press. I asked, as what? I was thinking, I hope it's health minister. He said, no, as environment minister, because I don't want my government ministers to serve in their own professional capacity. It took a day, I guess, before I realized environmental policies are public health policies for people at large. You know, it's really the same thing. You know, we don't take care of nature only because we love the birds, but we do it because it's best for humanity. You were the head of the World Health Organization, you're a physician, and clearly you led the global effort on preventative care. The central question, it seems, is whether or not you believe that carbon dioxide is causing uh, it, is causing, it is warming. causing global warming, no doubt at all. And uh, in fact, just speaking from my experience and from my time as Norwegian Prime Minister, um, I mean, we shocked uh, the world, especially the Gulf and uh, other oil-producing states, when we introduced a CO2 tax already in 1990. And what has, what has happened after that? Our continental shelf has only one third of the emissions of the global average. Why? Because we introduced the CO2 tax that made it an inspiration and incentive for the oil industry to make changes. Okay. It has happened that people have been describing me as too tough, not with enough humor, for instance. I think this is a, a description of the fact that when a woman is a leader, she seems to people, you know, un, you know, it's kind of they, subconsciously, they're not aware of why, but nobody reacts, uh, you know, in a special way if, if a man has to make a difficult decision and be tough in some kind of way because decisions have to be made. If you are a prime minister, you have to do that. If you're a woman, you know, you can be criticized because you did the thing that any leader would have done. But since most leaders are men, some people don't really understand why they respond differently to a woman with determination compared to a man with determination. It doesn't mean that I'm not in my private life or even on a public scene like yesterday able to, to be, you know, laughing or humoristic, humoristic in my approach. But it's, it's, you always are going to be criticized when you are in public life because people are competing for your position. Simple as that.